This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The next loop type I want to discuss is the for loop. The for loop differs from the while loop in that the for loop is always count controlled. You use a for loop when you know exactly how many times you want your set of statements to be executed. The general form of the for loop looks like this. We have the keyword for, followed by open parentheses. Inside the open parentheses is where we're going to create the loop control variable, use a relational expression to test it, and then modify that variable in some way or another. So our loop control variable is initialized first, followed by a relational expression to test that loop control variable, followed by loop control variable modification. That's called the heading of the for loop. Follow that with an open brace to indicate the body. Inside the for loop body will be the set of statements you want to execute. Follow that up with a close brace to close the body, and that's the form of a for loop. Before we look at examples and code blocks, let me show you a simple example here in Notepad. If we want to display the first 10 integers or the first 10 whole numbers, we'd write our for loop like so. So here I'm declaring i as the loop control variable and initializing it to 1. Then I want to say why i is less than 11, in other words, while it has the values 1 through 10, and then its modification is each time through the loop, I want to increment i by 1. I'll put my open brace at the end of that same line to save a little space. And then here all I have to do is write out the value of i, followed by a space, close the loop, and then when this program is executed, it will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So you see, for simple problems like this, the for loop is much more concise than the while loop. We can compact a lot of information into the heading, which saves us quite a bit of typing, or at least saves us some lines of code to read. So let's move from theory to practice, and let's run that program, displaying the first 10 integers. So we'll type 4, followed by our loop control variable declaration and initialization, int i equals 1, followed by our relational expression, i less than 11, followed by our modification, increment i by 1. Open the body, write out the value of i with a space so that we'll be able to have a little space between the numbers, close off the loop, and we're ready to build and run. So we'll select that, and you see that we get 1 through 10. Of course, you don't have to increment i just by 1. We could do the odd integers 1 through 10 by writing i plus equal 2. Let's build and run that example. And so you see we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So there's, you know, just innumerable ways you can modify these programs. Usually, though, you're going to iterate one at a time through whatever it is you're writing your for loop for, so the increment will be one. But, of course, that's not always the case. There are some changes we can make to the for loop, some non-standard ways to write it. For example, we don't have to declare the loop control variable inside the heading. We can move that declaration to the line before it or somewhere outside the for loop. So we could declare i outside the loop and then run it. Same result. That does have some effects to your program that we're going to explore later as far as what's called variable scope goes. But for now, we're not going to worry too much about that. We can also declare an initialize outside the loop so that we don't need any of the first part of our heading. So we can just write a null statement here. A null statement is just a semicolon by itself, indicating that no real statement is needed other than the fact that something has to be there. The compiler is looking for something even if it's just a null statement, so we have to put the semicolon there. So if we build and run this example, same result. We can also move the modification of the loop control variable outside of the heading and place it in the body of the loop like so. We'll build and run again, get the same result. But now that I've shown you how to do these, let me just say that all of these changes to the for loop are very non-standard and are not recommended. What we want to do is we want to write the program so that anybody who has a familiarity with the language can understand it. 
and understand it easily and quickly. And most people looking at for loops expect the declaration, initialization of the loop control variable and the modification to all be in the heading like so. That pretty much explains how to write for loops. In the next video, we'll talk about actually doing some problem solving with for loops.